Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at version 3 of build a -Pi. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. So there's been a lot of changes between version 2 and version 3 of build a -Pi. I did a video just a while back, I'll leave a link to it right up at the top, that kind of goes through some of the issues that we've had in past builds. And while I'm thinking about it, I've got to give a huge shout out to my patrons. They really hung in there with me while we worked the bugs out of this latest build. And the newsletter guys for helping me push this thing across the finish line. All right, let's go ahead and get right to it. I flash Buster, the very latest one, I believe that's dated May 2020, uh, to the SD card, and I've booted up. That's the only thing I've done. Well, I do have SSH and VNC enabled, but those are the only things I've done to it. Other than that, this is a bone stock uh, system. You can see that by looking at the warnings on the screen that I haven't even changed the default password. And I'm not even going to worry about that yet. You'll notice I also have not uh, connected it up to Wi-Fi. I am running this over a Cat5 cable. So let's go ahead and jump over to GitHub. And I'll leave a link to this website right across the screen right here. Once we're over here on GitHub, let's go ahead and click on the repositories. And then let's choose PyBuild. We are going to scroll down the page just a little bit until we find the install section. Everything here in the gray box, we're just going to highlight and then we'll go ahead and copy that one command. Let's head back over to the Raspberry Pi, go ahead and open up a terminal and we'll paste in that one long command. Press return and sit back. It'll take this uh, three, four minutes before you'll get the uh, first dialog box. So it's just got to install a few things that we need before we get to actually building the Pi. After the script has updated a few things, you'll be presented with this dialog box. It tells you it takes approximately four hours to complete. That really depends on what you're installing and how fast your internet connection is. It also depends on which Pi you're running. If you're running a Pi 3, it's going to take longer than if you're running it on uh, one of the new Pi 4s that's got a bit faster processor and more RAM memory available. But we'll go ahead and click continue here and it's going to ask me for my call sign. We'll give it the call sign and press continue. Next, you will be presented with one of four screens. Uh, this screen is the base applications, and for most installations, I'm going to recommend everything on this screen. The only thing you might be opposed to if you have past experience, some guys just do not like Pulse Audio. In that case, you can skip that one, but uh, pretty much everybody should install everything from this screen unless you have a specific reason not to. Now, in this particular case, I've got a reason not to. I want this video to be a little bit faster. So I'm simply going to choose the hotspot and we'll go ahead and grab the hotspot tools. You also notice down here at the bottom, we have a check all and continue button. So if I clicked that button, it would select every single application and move me to the next screen. For now, I'm just going to press next. Now, because I've chosen to install the hotspot, it's going to ask me for some hotspot information. So it's going to ask me uh, which SSID I want to connect to. That's, uh, this is the one that's already in your home or your shack. I'm going to just connect to my 857. It's going to ask me for the password. And the next line down is going to ask me for the hotspot password. So when your Pi goes into hotspot mode, this is the password here in the last line that you will use to connect to the Pi when it's in hotspot mode. Should this screen appear blank when it first comes up, you can also press refresh Wi-Fi, or it might just not have picked up your home Wi-Fi signal to begin with, so you do have that option. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and press continue. The next screen you're presented with is the FL Digi Suite. So you can choose whichever pieces or parts of that suite 
that you would like to install. Now, one of the things that we've changed from version two to version three, in version two, you could pull these from the repository or you could build them from source. You had an option there. Now, if you choose to install this, you're getting it built from source. So go ahead and make your selection here of which of those you need installed and click the next button. The next screen you're presented with is a lot of other ham applications. And one thing guys I didn't mention, but it does give you a description of every single application that you're choosing to install. Now for this particular one, I'm just going to grab Pat because I do want you guys to see one additional screen. After making your selection here, just go ahead and press the next button. Now, if you did choose to install PAT, uh, it will ask you for your six digit grid square and your WinLink password. If you don't choose to install PAT, you will not see this screen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter this information in here. And press continue. The last screen here, we've just got a few utilities that we can install, uh, calculators, call sign lookups, uh, G-parted for some disk management type stuff. You get the idea. So choose what you want here and then choose install selected. And that's it. The Pi will go ahead and start building and installing everything that you've asked for in the background. So I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes. Once it finishes up, I want to come back and show you guys a few little hidden tricks built into build a Pi version 3 that's going to help you going forward. After everything finishes installing, you will get a reboot notice on the screen. I went ahead and clicked reboot before I came back to the video just to speed things up a bit. I'm going to close out of this. I'm still getting these warnings because I have not set up or changed my uh, default password and I haven't done any localization. I can get to that later. One thing that will help you going forward, if we come up to the main Pi menu and come down to preferences, you will see a build a Pi entry here. This is the icon that you want to use to keep your Pi up to date. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it will open up this screen. Now you do need to click the start scan button so that we can check and see what's installed and what might have a newer version to it. We'll go ahead and click continue here with my call sign and then it's going to pull up this screen here and this will tell you what we uh, it'll show you what we installed on the first run so you can see that the hotspot is installed you can see hotspot tools is the latest version and nothing else is installed which is exactly what we did the first time through. We'll go ahead and click the next button there and uh, you can see I didn't install any of the FL Digi Suite for this video. I'm gonna go ahead and click next there. There is one piece of software that I do want to install so I can show you guys something else. Those of you that run different screen resolutions than what I run. So this time through I'm going to choose to install Conky and I'm just going to go ahead and click next and we've got one more screen that we need to click through by choosing install and update selected. So we'll give that just a couple of minutes to run and I'll be right back with you guys. And through the magic of video that is probably one of the fastest uh, installs you've ever witnessed. Okay, before we get to the Conky, I do want to show you guys one thing about the sound card. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit larger for us so we can uh, read it a bit easier. Whoop, and chose the wrong button there. Let's try that again. All right, that should be a bit easier for you to read. Something that has come about in the very latest version of Buster is the way it numbers sound cards. Historically, when we plugged in a USB sound card, it was always assigned card number one and device zero. With the latest Buster, the way they are numbering things, it depends on when you plug your sound card in. Now, when I say sound card, this could be uh, the little USB sound cards that I run. This could be a Signalink 
or this could be a radio such as the ICOM 7300 that has a built-in sound card. But depending on when that is plugged up, it can be named maybe card number one or it might get assigned card number two. One of the things build a -Pi does is it helps take care of that in the background. So anything you plug in will be card number two, and it should be assigned that regardless of when you plug it in. I just ran the A record hyphen L command, and you will see that my little USB sound card did get assigned card number two, and it should stay assigned card two regardless of how uh, or if it's plugged in during the boot or not. So, but uh, that can change things if you're looking to maybe uh, modify your direwolf file or something like that. You just need to be aware that it's not uh, one comma zero anymore. It's now two comma zero. Okay, so let's clear that screen out. And you'll notice I do have Conky over here running. Now, I am getting some error right here with my grid square. That's because I didn't install the GPS software during, the, uh, during building a while ago. I could always go back and install that now if I wanted to, but it's not important for this portion. A lot of you guys have emailed me from time to time to tell me that Conky is running off of the bottom of the screen. Or another popular request is how do they change the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit? So let me show you guys how to do that. We can change all of this up with one command now. So I'm going to run bash the tilde sign forward slash pi hyphen build forward slash conky forward slash set conky. That's S E T. C-O-N-K-Y. Go ahead and press return and you will be presented with this box here. So first it's going to ask you for your call sign and then you have three options for choosing which conky size you want to use. Now it doesn't matter what you're currently running, it's always going to default here to conky small. By default, conky large, which is what you're seeing over here on the right hand side of the screen, is what is currently installed. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that at large, and I'm going to change this to Fahrenheit. Uh, and the reason I didn't choose medium or small is because I'm running a higher screen resolution. It will become so tiny that we wouldn't even be able to read it. But if we go ahead and choose continue here, you'll see that Conky disappears, and then it comes right back. It lets you know that it's being restarted. We can just press OK. Now if we look over here, though, Everything appears the same because I chose the exact same size that I was running, but you notice my temperature is now in Fahrenheit. So hopefully that'll help you guys that need to resize Conky after the build. Coming up Friday, I'm going to walk through what you need to do after you get this installed to get it configured for your particular setup. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.